Hi everybody, welcome to this free course of funerary archaeology. Welcome, please join me into this uh, six weeks long course. It's free and you can study at your, your own pace. You don't have to follow along uh, the live streaming. Uh, everything will be shared with you in the classroom um, of the course. You can find other information in the info box down below. So please check it out. Uh, I'm Lucia. I'm a physical anthropologist and a classical archaeologist from University of Pisa, Italy. I hope that uh, my English is good because it's been a long time since I practice uh, my speaking. Um, so I hope that my pronunciation is not uh, so bad. Thank you all again for um, the support and uh, your kindness in the comment. Um, I'm very glad to have you as a student. So, um, this course, as I said before, is completely free. Once you, are, you have enrolled in the course, um, you are eligible to have a certificate for um, uh, the attended or the attendance of the course. And uh, um, all the, the material for the lessons will be put by me, your teacher, into the um, course page on Classroom. So, what is this course about? <laughs> I'll share you my PowerPoint, my presentation. It's not a big deal. <laughs> It's only an introduction of the course. So, the course is about funerary archaeology. What is funerary archaeology? Why? Is it so important for the archaeological record? We'll see it during the, the weeks of the course. The learning objectives and the aim of this course is uh, giving the students the tools to approach the study of the dead, burial and funerary rituals in the Anson society with close attention to the interpretation of status and symbolism in different archaeological evidence. So, um, of course, as I said before, uh, given my background in classical studies, uh, the example that I've chosen to show you came from classical um, societies, such as Aegean and Roman. Um, I choose to uh, put out of my dissertation um, the medieval age and uh, Christianity because they are not part of my work and uh, um, my knowledge. So I'll give that to another teacher if uh, there will be one. Um, I will give you also more information about physical anthropology and taphonomy. And of course, the so-called anthropologie de terrain, uh, um, unknown, uh, which was uh, created by the French Harry Today, which is a who is a staple of uh, the study of um, funerary archaeology. And, uh, uh, of course, physical anthropology is also important, uh, not only because I am a physical anthropologist myself, <laughs> uh, but because um, the body as an archive of all information um, of past society, starting from uh, diet, 
pathology, health and well-being at that, um, but also the interaction between the body of the corpse, the skeleton eyes, the body, the, the mummies, uh, the human remains, to say so, and the environment, such as the tomb, the grave. This relationship is also important because uh, the link between them change from time to time, from society to one another. So it's close to the ritual. And uh, of course, not only to ritual, but also to um, the thought of that specific population, past society. So it's very important uh, for the study of ancient population. Uh, I must say that many times um, the archaeologists you know, choose to focus their study only on uh, the architecture of the tomb, on paintings, on art, on great goods, uh, but rarely they focus on the body. So <laughs> this course is meant to be this, to give you um, other approaches about physical anthropology. But don't be scared because I know that physical anthropology uh, can be intimidating because it's uh, um, a subject linked not only to anthropology itself as a branch, but uh, um, also to uh, medicine and uh, uh, biology. So it can be very tricky and hard uh, to understand for someone. Uh, but uh, I will promise that uh, uh, my lesson will focus only on the very basic and fundamental uh, aspect of physical anthropology, uh, only to give you uh, the very base to, um, to the subject in order for you to be able to better understand uh, the relationship between the dead and the living. Everything in this course will be an entry level. Of course, the, langu the language is English. <laughs> Even so, if, um, if I, uh, I speak so bad, I hope you will ex excuse myself. <laughs> but um, I know that English is the language of future, uh, better communication. So <laughs> I will um, give my best and try to give my best. So starting from week one, what should we expect from this course? Week one to week two are focused on an introduction to anthropological studies, such as the archaeology of death, the perception of death and the beginning of the funerary behavior, funerary archaeology, an introduction to the discipline and its theoretical developments, an overview of the theory and the methodology of the study of funerary areas, burial context, and social and symbolic perception of death in past society, the ideology of the human right, and of course the treatment of the body, the tomb, offering, and grave goods. Starting week three, we then approach taphonomy, or better saying, the study of taphonomy related into the branch of bioarchaeology. So uh, the body to the skeleton, the skeleton seen as a biological archive and notion of physical anthropology, as uh, I said earlier, elements of taphonomy, primary and secondary burials, burials in filled space and in empty space, multiple and collective burials, burials of baby. Uh, the burials of babies uh, need to be clarified and need uh, a time apart from everyone, from everything else. Uh, cremation and of course, funerary complexes.
By week four, we entered in the example areas. As I said earlier, example will be given from past society, such as Aegean society, Minoan, Mycenaean, and ancient Cyprus, of course, ancient Greece and Etruscan society. Given that I'm, I'm from Tuscany, <laughs> I cannot escape uh, Etruscan society. Uh, this will be fun, really. Uh, Rome up to the empire. By week five to six, my students need to exercise because, of course, to be eligible for the certificate of the course, you have to <laughs> make some effort. And by some effort, I mean take exercise and quizzes. Don't worry, they will be very, very entry level, such as cross quizzes. And uh, I hope that you find them interesting and entertaining. Of course, during week six and week five, I will be online under your request at a given time. We can work uh, uh, on it uh, together under the comment section uh, in, Google, in Google Classroom. So if you have any request, uh, if you want me to um, answer uh, specific questions, or if you have any doubts or uh, whatsoever, uh, we can work together and uh, let me know it in the comment. About a suggested reading list, or, or to say a bibliography of, of uh, this course, um, in this list I've put some of uh, the staples to the matter, uh, such as Henri Dudet, The Archaeology of Death, uh, Pearson, The Archaeology of Death and Burial, Nielsen Stultz, The Oxford Handbook of the Archaeology of Death and Burial. Of course, I will share with you students um, all the books, all the chapters that you need to study. If you see uh, linked and written here a title of a book that you, you don't have, you can ask um, other students or the tutor and we can work uh, together to, to find the source. Uh, from some of this book, I will suggest you um, to read only um, some chapters, some pages, but I will write uh, uh, it on the Google Classroom page of the course. I have also added Laneri, Performing Death, the social analysis of funerary tradition, because uh, Laneri is a, an Italian researcher and uh, his work on death and archaeology of death are quite innovative so and new compared to the other one. So I want to put uh, it to. Um, for my Italian students that requested me, even before this course started, uh, some Italian bibliography. Uh, here you can find uh, um, written only Canciminozzi, Archaeologia dei Resti Umani, but because it's the first one that came out into my mind <laughs> about the matter, uh, there are plenty of it. Uh, also, uh, the translation of Dudem, Laneri, e Pearson. So, um, and many others one that uh, I will share with you under your request, again, on the Google Classroom page of the course. So, um, about the time, as I said earlier, um, lesson will be out three times per week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, at approximately uh, 7 p.m. Central Europe time. If you didn't find me online, <laughs> please have faith, I will be. 
I live in a countryside and my um, Wi-Fi is not <laughs> so new. Uh, even today, um, there will there has been some problem. Uh, so, finger crossed, <laughs> I will try my best. Other than live uh, lessons, under uh, the page of the course on Google Classroom, you will find all the material, such as uh, the PowerPoint presentation, uh, writings, and so on. So, let's keep in touch. Um, also, another thing, I want to thank um, the guys at Save Cultural Heritage Group for uh, having invited me to join on board and giving me this wonderful opportunity and a growing, growing experience for me. So I'm very glad and uh, I'm very, very happy to be a part of and to be able to teach you. Uh, so uh, what I to say, uh, yes, I, me and the other tutors and mentors at Save Cultural Heritage uh, wanted our student to um, interact um, the best way possible and the more way possible, uh, creating a personalized hashtag of this course that you, you will find again in Google Classroom and you are encouraged to take picture of yourself studying, attending lessons, and so on, with books and whatever, uh, anything that comes to your mind, pets <laughs> that, <laughs> that give you company while you're studying, and uh, to create um, a wonderful family and a wonderful sharing experience of the course. Again, Thank you for your attention. Here you can find um, my social link. Please add me on because uh, you can find me online on one platform or another one. So if you have any dubs, please um, do so. Uh, this is also my uh, personal email address. And I hope to hear from you, from you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon.